I abandoned my father-in-law because he broke my toy. It's not for kids. I mean, I hope not. But plugs for Djibouti. I moved in with my now fiance back in January of 2022. His stepmom owns the house and his dad owns nothing. His stepmom wanted us to watch the house for them while she did her travel nursing so someone would be around to keep her cats fed. And of course, the dad went with her. We were not staying there for free. They still charged us rent and we had to pay all the utilities but between the two of us, it wasn't an issue. Hey, uh, could you watch my kid? Uh, just make sure you pay me. For the opportunity to babysit my child. The honor! Our cats are so sick. This pussy so dang that it should be paid to be played with. Dankest pussy on earth, you know what I mean? It was a really nice experience being able to finally live with the man I love. And everything was going perfect for the first three months. Then we got the notice that they were coming back because the contract was over and they would be visiting for a couple of weeks before his stepmom got another contract. Contract. So I went into super duper cleaning mode because I didn't want it to look like we lived there, right? Lol. Cleaned every room except mine because I wasn't expecting them to go anywhere near it or in it without asking. Just as I never went into their room because that's their stuff. I have a lot of uh, special stuff laying around in my room because it's my private space where I do private things. How special are we talking over here, Samuel? Let's just say she recently came back from a mission trip in Djibouti. Interesting. She recently came back. So the day comes and they arrive. It's all pleasant greetings and ordering pizza because nobody wants to cook. And somehow a conversation comes up where his dad asked me if I cooked any recipes from his binder of recipes. I told him I didn't because I usually just cook things I know and didn't think to look for a book to get a new recipe. He then decided, ah, I don't know. I don't believe that shit. And went on a hunt to find his binder and looked everywhere in the house and started getting frantic tossing the couches apart, lifting tables and things going everywhere. My fiance was in our room looking for it. So I figured that was good enough. And his dad wouldn't try looking in there himself. I think at this point, this is when you maybe like proactively clean your room just in case this crazy man comes looking for a cookbook and then sees your like 12 inch fun stick in there, you know? But you know what? What if I proudly want to display my, my fun stick for the world to say, you know, why, why should I have to hide it away? You know, I, it's convenient where I leave it. You know, I can just... The job is done. The job is done. You know, that John's sitting on something right now. Man needs to be stimulated at all times to ensure that he can read these stories well. I'm so stimulated. Don't take away my convenience of stimulation. That's all I'm saying. Don't take it away. Our room is downstairs in a basement with three other rooms. And I didn't think much of it when his dad came upstairs and asked me where some scissors were. And I handed him a pair. About 30 minutes later, after food arrived, he looked above the fridge in the super high cabinet and finally found his recipes where he left them. We ate food and watched a movie. And then after saying goodnight, we went to our room. As I was about to lay down, I noticed one of my toys was in a weird spot. Then I got a better look and the charging cord was cut up in four separate pieces with a USB still plugged into the wall and the other part still inside the toy. Cut? Cut. Four different pieces. What did Ezard Scissorhands get himself into over here? Bro, he's just anti-fun. Dude, Bro. man hates stimulation. Don't take my stimulation away from me. I'll be a grumpy, grumpy puss. You can take my guns, yep. but don't take my fun sticks. That's right. Second Amendment, baby. Oh, how did we end up here? <laughs> Let's keep going. So my heart sank and I showed my fiance what happened. He at first thought maybe the cats got to it, but these were clean cuts and the loose parts were in a pile and not scattered. I no longer felt safe in that house. My fiance didn't want to have to confront his dad because he is extremely hard headed and would probably lead to them fighting and then us getting kicked out. So he begged me to be strong and to not bring it up. I cried so hard that night. Not only did I want to confront him, but I wanted him to pay for the toy because it was super expensive felt violated but is like the whole toy broken or is it just the cord i mean the act itself is it's not cool so, it's so like the weirdness of it is what yeah. like it's just like so it's like oh man i can't charge it for a few hours i'll just go get a usb-c <laughs> 
No, I mean the weirdness from the father-in-law. Like, what would possess you? No daughter-in-law of mine is getting any. Oh, now I'm connected. Hey, my, my son ain't enough for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. wow. Come on, daddy-in-law. Everyone deserves a little fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. One in the pink, one in the stink. That's right. That's how we do it. I avoided his dad like the plague for the whole time he was there until the stepmom took me aside to ask if I was okay because she knew I was avoiding her husband and wanted to know what happened. So I told her what he did and she looked mortified and said she would talk to him. The next day, his dad went out early in the morning to go work out for about an hour, but didn't come home until the late afternoon. Afternoon. Me and the stepmom were just having a nice talk in the living room when he came back and was holding his hand like a kid trying to pretend they are injured and wanted attention. He went straight to the freezer, got an ice pack and made a scene of going to the bathroom. His wife called out asking what was up and he said nothing like a little immature kid. She asked me if I saw what he grabbed and I told her he grabbed an ice pack. She called out to him again and said, what happened? Did you hurt yourself? And again, like an immature kid said, you don't want to know and closed the bathroom door. Dude, he was inspired by OP and tried his own fun stick and it did not. Yeah. Or maybe he just tried his own fist, broke his wrist. Dude, all natural. <laughs> all natural, that's, that's baby. That's what I always say. You know? Keep it organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got, you got, you got this one, you got this one, you got this one. Dude, hands are just nature's butt hugs. That's, that's all it is. What is your favorite combination of fingers? Put your <laughs> answers in the comments all below. All of you 90% women out there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. He eventually came out and came straight to my face very aggressively and said, well, if I wasn't so upset about being accused of cutting your cord, this wouldn't have happened to my hand. He came up with a BS story about how he was shopping at a gas station and some guy was being abusive to his girlfriend and he told the guy to stop and the guy swung at him and so he beat the guy up and now he has a busted hand. I am so lost. He then proceeded to tell me that it was my fiance that cut my cord and he needed to be questioned instead. I was at a loss for words because of how stupid he was and that his wife believed him. I was going to tell him to F off with that BS, but I had to go to work. So on my way to work, I texted my fiance everything that his dad said. He later told me he expected something like this to happen because every time his dad gets caught in a lie, he has to make up some stupid story of him being a victim or some kind of hero to make people empathize with him. Bro, this guy, he cut a cord, cut his hand. How could I cut this cord? I was saving a homeless person from an aggressor. I was saving 10 hundred kittens from a tree. I was helping some elderly woman with her fisting. <laughs> I think we found your way back to a Nobel Peace Prize, man. I think we just found it. I got you, y'all. Bill Gates, step down again. Every wizard sleeve needs to be filled. Wizard sleeve. <laughs> That's correct. That's right. It's empty. It needs it. Needs it. Desperately. Those buttholes aren't going to fill themselves. No, they won't. We got to put the troops on the front lines. <laughs> Or the back lines. That's true. The back intestinal lines. That's right. To go right there. Right there. Breach the gates. Breach them. Breach through the walls. <laughs> Just crawl in. <laughs> Just when you think he runs out of steam. He comes back. He keeps going. Oh. Oh, dude. Okay, so basically he was just like, my dad always lies and tells these crazy stories to get people to empathize with them. For example, he cheated on his wife and got caught. So he went out for a while and supposedly a couple of guys tried to jump him and he killed them both. <laughs> and his wife believed it. I don't even know what to say to that. When my fiance was younger, he caught his dad in a lie and his dad accidentally poured beer on his Xbox he bought with his own money. He has the mentality of if I'm wrong, then everyone else is. Anyway, back to the story. So my fiance was going to talk with him privately and tell his dad he owed me money for the toy to about and he said to apologize to me. Unfortunately, his dad canceled their hangout and ended up leaving the next day with nothing being resolved. I wonder who's gonna, going to body right now and come back with a crazy story. True. I had to molly wallop 10 people to save one granny. One granny. Come on, dude. Another few months go by and another in-between visit. I completely ignore his dad, not even give him a glance of recognition that he is there. He pulls my fiance aside one night and tells him he forgives him and has to put the whole thing behind him. 
I laugh so hard. He's such a narcissist that he believes his own lies. Funny thing is, the toy isn't just for me. My fiance uses them too. So he has no reason to maliciously destroy something he likes. This visit was a lot longer and everyone was so annoying. They wouldn't say anything to my face. They would tell my fiance things to the telephone to me. The last thing was the stepmom saying I needed to be nice to her husband because he's in a good mood when they are out traveling. But when they come back, I'm ignoring him. It puts him in a bad mood and he snaps. Oh, geez. I wonder why. Maybe I'm just a reminder that he's an a-hole that got caught. She said if I didn't act nice, they would kick us out. Oh, please. Do it. <laughs> Make my freaking day. Go ahead. Find someone else willing to pay your rent, all the utilities, and feed your dumb ass cats that puke everywhere and can't stop eating plastic and find wrappers in the litter box. OMG, I don't miss it. So I complied and just stayed in my room the whole time and only left to go to work. Christmas came and it was the performance of a life. I felt sick to my stomach pretending to tolerate him. We didn't get him any presents except a toy. No, I'm kidding. A gift card to Adam and Eve. No. <laughs> except a gift card. I got the stepmom a lot of pamper presents and an auto feeder for her cats because they are huge, massive fat cats. They got us a bunch of hand-me-downs and extra cooking supplies and household items they no longer needed since they are now no longer doing travel nursing. So it sounds like they just gave them the junk they didn't want. And now I'm so happy to be moved out as of January 3rd this year and we are on our own and don't have to see them every day. We're going to have a family talk soon because if his dad doesn't own up to the shit he has done, we are going 100% no contact. And there is a juicy update. But John, I want to know, and I want everyone else, like, please put your comments below. Is this enough to go no contact? I mean, honestly, I'm thinking more of the time when he cheated on his wife and said he saved some damsel in distress yeah, from yeah, yeah. Two, two mean muggers. Matterous. It's already, like, beyond ridiculous what he's doing. But in that scenario, that's like, yo, you are hurting your wife so much and making up these stupid lies I mean, that she believes. I mean, I guess the cheating hurts. Yeah. So she ended up believing him, right? In the end. But she still knows he cheated. Let me know what you think in the comments. So, update. So we were going to have a time to talk tomorrow, but it has now been canceled. I showed my fiance this Reddit post and had him read the responses. We both got to thinking about how much stress this whole situation has put on us, and neither one of us really wants to see him in person to talk about the situation because 99% positive it will go through one ear and out the next. And he will just deny everything and start talking over us. So instead of going Going there and wasting time and putting ourselves through lots of yelling and turmoil, we've decided to write him a letter so he can't have a chance to interrupt or try to intimidate us. The letter is already four pages long and it's been hard for my fiance to write because it gets him shaking, having to relive some of the horrendous things his father has done to him and write it down on paper. I would love to share it, but for my fiance's privacy, I won't. There's a lot of things in there that he didn't even tell me till now because he didn't want me to immediately hate his family when we first met that which I guess makes sense. Families can be hard like that. That is true. My heart aches for him and I just want this whole situation to be over with already. We wrote in the letter that he not respond to us for about a week to think it all over and not call or text unless he acknowledges that he did do the things mentioned in the letter and apologize wholeheartedly. And if not, this will be the last time he hears from his son. We are going to be dropping the letter in his mailbox in the middle of the night tonight so there isn't a chance of him trying to talk to us. If anything comes up before the time we gave him to read the letter and self-reflect. I'll make sure to update here again. And that is a wrap. What a crazy coping mechanism for just avoiding anyone's judgment. You know what he really needs to do? Start a YouTube channel. <laughs> And let his audience psychoanalyze him. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, he could create these stories. Endless Reddit stories from this man. You just put him on camera and you, like, make him squirm a little bit. Like, where were you on the night of the six? He's like, I wasn't cheating on my wife because I had to go to San Francisco to help the homeless and ensure that each person had a butt plug from my fiance. Wow. Butt plugs for the homeless. That's another one. That one might be your greatest yet. Yeah, you've had a lot of great ones. 
ones, but like you know, universal butt plug. You know, they've heard of UBI universal butt plug incoming. <laughs> you got my vote. I that's what I'm running on. That's what I'm running on. But you know what we should be running on to this next story. And if you have a story yourself, you should submit it to us at 440-508-6567. We'd love to hear it. Send it in. Let's get into this next one. Entitled dad demands we pay for his food. What he did next was unforgivable. Instead of eating the food, he ate my butt. <laughs> then he asked for dessert. This mostly involves me, 33 non-binary, my wife, 36 female, a former friend of mine, Aaron, 43 female, and his son, Ethan. These are set across a six or seven year period, and I have way too many, but consider this the greatest hits. Shortly after my mom kicked me out at the age of 17, the day after Christmas, don't worry, she'll have her own post eventually, after crashing with my best friend's family, I moved into my first place. It was an absolute slum, but was only $200 a month, utilities included. Dude, I mean, how much of a slum are we talking? Like, are we talking like a literal slum? Dude, I wasn't there very long, but in that time, I had a couple of roommates, but eventually my girlfriend, now wife, moved in. By chance, we met an old friend of mine who had moved away at the grocery. We catch up, and after a few pretty solid days of hanging out, he introduces us to his friend group. One of these people is Aaron. Aaron was a decade older than us, but he was a big gamer, loved Dungeons and Dragons, comics, fantasy novels, Star Wars, anime. A decade older. Dude. That's probably what Jack feels about us. It's like, oh yeah, I have these friends that are a decade older than me, but they're pretty cool. We have this friend who's like a YouTuber and he's like 19, super, super smart, but we're just ancient, dude. Ancient. We're ancient compared to him. And Aaron was basically the older brother of that friend group who were a bunch of 20 something nerds. My wife and I hit it off with him really well. Despite my description of him, he was a pretty charismatic guy. Well, after hanging out for a few weeks, he'd mentioned that he was the super of the building that we lived in. He was, in fact, not the super of the building, and his parents owned the place. That was true. He let us know that the apartment across the hall from him was opening up soon, and we jumped at the opportunity to get out of the hellhole we lived in. The $200 hellhole? The $200 one. Damn, great price, though. Yeah, right? <laughs> I really want to know what that looks like. Same, same. About a month later, we ended up as neighbors. Things started out fine for the most part. Aaron was recently divorced, and his son, Ethan, who was one at the time, lived with him full time. In the beginning, he worked at the local KFC and he got free rent from his parents. Pretty nice. All he needed to pay was utilities. Well, for whatever reason, I honestly can't recall, he was let go from KFC. From that point on, Aaron would not have a job for the next four years. Damn. Chronically jobless out here. Damn. It's not like he was looking for like something crazy. He was working at KFC. Like there's a lot of jobs like working at KFC that are out. And so it's not like that's like a job that's rare. That's true. Right? There should be something for our man out there. Unless he just sucks at making that chicken. Or he's too loyal. He's like Long John Silver's Taco Bell. Get out of my face. No, no, no. Not never. About that would, life. Never. Mm -mm. Now, I'm not going to disparage anyone for not having a job. It happened to me. However, Aaron at the time was more than capable of working. He just didn't. Instead, he played a lot of games, especially MMOs. Yeah. So it's like RuneScape, like World of Warcraft, God. those kind of things, especially massively multiplayer online games like RuneScape, that kind of thing. He was always hitting up his other friends for cash and gifts. However, this got to the point where people would stop playing playing with him all together, which makes perfect sense. During this time, he'd often hit me and my wife up for money and gifts as well. On top of that, anytime we'd head to the grocery store, he'd hand us gift cards and things and expect us to bring him food too. Wait, he would give you gift cards? That sounds sketchy. That sounds like some dark net shit. Bro, you've heard of like the gift card scams and shit where it's like, pick up a gift card, put in my name, give right. me a code. I don't know. That sounds sketchy. If he's paying in gift cards, there's some sketchy shit going on. And getting other people to buy things for like, bro, this Say DoorDash, like because gift cards are like kind of untraceable, right? It's like basically cash almost. Literally every time we go to get groceries, he does this. I live in a very walkable city and don't drive, so we'd be carrying back food for this guy and his kid. Anytime we didn't, he'd throw a huge tantrum, the dad, not the son to be specific, and talk about how we were taking food 
food out of his son's mouth or punishing him for being a parent. Now, because my wife and I are child free, he'd say we didn't understand because we hated children. We don't hate kids, mind you. And little Ethan was basically like a nephew to us. Every once in a while, he'd also convince some of our driving mutual friends to take him on grocery runs. But those only happened maybe two or three times per friend because they wouldn't put up with him like he would. This guy doesn't have a car. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't have a wallet, only has hundreds of gift cards, and this emaciated child goes to the grocery store with RuneScape in game currency trying to buy loaves of bread. I'll buy you three loaves of bread for this wood. I will trade you this emerald sword for a carton of eggs. <laughs> Darn inflation. I need a platinum sword these days. Oh my God. Now, this would all come to a head when he tried to guilt trip some of our friends, streamers, on a stream at 1 a.m. for not dropping everything to drive across town, pick him up, and buy him dinner. This is three days after they bought him a $300 gaming chair because his fat butt broke his old one. All of that and driving across town to build it for him too. They built the chair too. This man, this man has gotten too much. When I say his fat butt, I really mean it too. He was pushing 500 pounds. Now I am pretty heavy set myself. A lot of my friends and family are. I completely get it. However, one of the things he did was constantly eat out. Hopefully the food. He would eat really big meals at buffets or order multiple pizzas. <laughs> Is this like Nico avocado or something? Oh yeah, f he said he liked cooking, but he basically never did. This did not help his weight and very much did not help his budget. During this time and later when he finally got his new but short-lived job, he was always asking my wife to watch Ethan while he went out to who knows where. We're talking five to ten hours at a time, sometimes for days on end. She saw Ethan more than Aaron did. Like literally they are watching his child more than he is watching his own child for free. For sure. There's no way he's paying him. Wow. I have a feeling that his life has got like, maybe he got like divorced or his wife died, his health plummeted. And like, these are all old friends from his previous life where he was like taking care of himself. He's treating his friends like the buffet <laughs> that he <laughs> loves chow down on. We were there for diaper changes, baths, potty training, meals, all of it. My wife basically raised him. All of this without pay other than him occasionally buying us some food. Because his divorce was insanely bad, his wife tricked him him into having Ethan by lying about birth control, stole his car, crashed it, resulting in him losing his car, having his license revoked, and then cheating on him with his best friend and running away with the best friend. Okay, yeah, yep. Dude has been yep. through it. He was super depressed all the time. His place was always torn up as well. The grossest place I've ever seen. And he'd convinced my wife and me to clean it for him. Once again, using his son as a guilt trip. Somewhere along the line, he let Ethan whiz all over the floor and spill juice and stuff. So his carpet floor was always covered in mildew. Oh my goodness. The bathroom was a wreck as well. Covered in human waste, grime, and more. There was toys and trash everywhere. Both he and his son slept on a mattress on the floor as well because they had to get rid of their bed frame. Why? Why, you may ask? Because of the bed bugs. Wait, bed frames and the bed bugs? Bed bugs and the bed frame? Yeah, couldn't they? Aren't they in the mattress? I think so. I was thinking, like, maybe he's like too big and like would oh, kill right. the ba bed frame. The bed bugs plagued our building for years, but he wouldn't report them to his parents because they'd kick him out if he or we did. Dude, man is going through it. He had a washer and a dryer provided by his parents, unlike the rest of the units in the building. Where's his parents? Dude, that is a great question. Like, if they can help with the rent, maybe there's, I mean, of all the people mentioned, the parents, I think, should be lending a hand the most here. Uh, the dryer broke about two years after we moved in, and he wouldn't report it to his parents for the same reason. This meant that he and his son wore wrinkled, mildewed clothes all the time. It got to the point where he convinced my wife to take their clothes whenever she went to the laundromat, and of course, she was paying. I mean, this guy's depressed. This is yeah. all like, this is all signals of depression. 
professional. I mean, he's massively depressed. He's not taking care of himself. It does not sound like he is in a position to take care of his kid. It honestly doesn't. Like, I don't think at all. Somewhere along the line, he had gotten bitten by a spider on his leg, which he nearly had to remove. This was apparently a combination of him not going to the ER soon enough and something about his diabetes. Luckily, after making all of these plans with us to take care of him throughout his recovery, his leg was intact. However, he would then go on to use his quote unquote rotten leg, his words, to milk more sympathy out of everyone around him dude dude come on now thankfully his dad who also owned some local car washes ended up hiring him to be a car washer to bring in a bit of money here and there dude the parents have got to hire him i'm so like or i don't know like it seems like they have the means like i mean that's what they're trying to do right i think so hire him here and there i'm like yeah, i don't hire know full time if he owns a car wash like have him out do like accounting or you know keep booking i don't know something now don't get me wrong his parents were abusive a-holes i guess it okay well there's some context but right after working there one year he got into a huge fight with his dad about being late all the time and he quit at that point his dad also started charging rent oh man because of this whole debacle we started making big meals for both households to keep his food costs down all while still providing free grocery pickups childcare, laundry service cleaning etc honestly real a real quick pause i'm i'm almost like should op and their wife like adopt ethan I mean, they're already taking care of him. Like they're already saying, I, I feel like they're, they're kind of just put with this like responsibility. It's a, it's, it's, it's an even more thing to like take him full on. But I, I, I am worried for Ethan. Like, I, you know, he probably needs, probably need to call CPS, but it's like always like with CPS, it's like, are you actually getting your kid into a better? Yeah. That I would love to know anyone who's been through the child, like protective service system or foster system. Like, like it sounds like, uh, this guy is like super neglectful. Yeah. But like, would the kid be actually better off in foster care? I wonder. I'm very curious. Let us know in the comments if you have any context or know about that. By this time, Ethan was in school as well. So my wife would walk him to and from school before taking care of him in the evening. We also started giving them $500 a month to help him get back on his feet with the promise he would start looking for a job. Man, they're really, really doing it. They're really helping him out. Right out of the gate, he said he would wouldn't do anything that had him on his feet because of his rotting leg. Fair, I guess. But he also wouldn't work a temp job or at a call center. Also, because of not driving, it had to be within walking distance, but not too far because of the weight and his leg. So the only jobs he could take were online, which, okay, yes. So instead of looking for data entry or something, he decided he would be a streamer. <sighs> F me. Okay. <laughs> You can make money as a streamer. Yeah. As a podcaster. Yep. But it takes years. Dude. It takes years of making no money. And you have to be like, you have to be dedicated. Yes. It's an investment. Yep. Especially streaming. Like streamers go so hard, especially on the come up. I would imagine like eight hours a day at least. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's intense. Dude. And then this guy really won't ever leave his house. That is, <laughs> I don't know if that's the best. That summer, his AC broke along with his oven. Again, instead of reporting this to his dad, the landlord who was responsible for these things, he begged me and my wife to pay for the fixes. This time around, I got an offer to move into an apartment complex literally only three miles away that was exclusively for artists. I was a full-time artist working in game development and doing some freelance photography and graphic design on the side. So this was a huge opportunity for me. Well, guess what? He started guilt tripping me and my wife about it, saying that if we moved away, he'd never see us again and that we were being unfair to Ethan. Three miles. That's all it was. He demands so much. So the most. The absolute most. Honestly, I guess he was right, but I'm getting ahead of myself. By this time, all of my friends had had enough of him. They figured he was fun enough to hang out with, but he started being a jerk to all of them too. Like for instance, storming out of multiple D&D games because he didn't like how they were going and not playing for months before coming back like nothing ever happened and then doing it all over again. No one but me and my wife would even talk to him after all that. 
So knowing what an opportunity moving into the artist collective would be, my friends had an intervention with me. They explained that I was being manipulated and instead of helping him and his son, I was being an enabler and that I needed to move and support my family. That might be true. Yeah. There's help and then there's a certain point where it's actually not helpful to help. I think it is good that the friends are sitting OP down and like bringing this to their attention. With much protest from Aaron, we have moved. However, I would still go for visits and my wife still occasionally babysat for Ethan. We also still paid him $500 a month. That was until I gave him a cookbook about cooking on a budget and he lost his mind. I told him that I really wasn't comfortable with him wasting all the money I gave him on junk food and that he should at least try to cook healthy for him and his son. At this point, Ethan was getting bullied for being overweight and his teachers had started saying things. I told Aaron that I wasn't going to enable him and that if he wanted my help, he was going to need to make these changes. That is like, like it's already hurting the kid. Big line cross there, yeah. I think. He was furious saying that I was acting just like his dad who had abused him his entire life and that he was going to do whatever he wanted with his money, quote unquote, and that if I stopped paying that I was abusing too. My God, dude, this guy is such a manipulator. Yeah, so bad. He told me that if I was going to do that, he would never speak to me again and that would be unfair to Ethan. I straight up told him that was bull and that we can still be in each other's lives. But at that point, I felt I needed to remove money from the equation and he told me that I was making the decision to never see him again. But that was enough. I told him, have a good life. Ooh. I mean, finally, OP is like, I'm putting my foot down. Right. Which is good. Like, I got like something that we needed to happen. It did. But there's more. Oh, my God. A few years later, I got a phone call from him asking about helping him getting into his Minecraft account, which I had gifted. Him. What a thing. What a thing. After years of literally no contact, just being like, yo, could you help me reset my password? Oh, I like, my God. I wonder if this is the gateway. Gateway ask to a bigger uh, ask. Right. But I couldn't help. And I also got a message from Ethan asking if we could see each other. I didn't respond because I didn't want to risk being manipulated by his dad again. I literally still get stress nightmares about him nearly a decade later. I know that a lot of this was my fault for not setting boundaries, but I didn't know that at the time. I'm just trying to move on. And the move I made, best thing I've ever done. The collective supported my indie game studio, so we're doing good things, including showcasing my work at the freaking Smithsonian. Wow. And now I'm the property manager for the building and I also manage the community gallery. Seriously, life changing stuff. Thank you for reading. Wow. I mean, I think what we learned from this, I, I would love to hear like, do you think OP did anything wrong in this? Do you think OP was enabling? And also when does helping someone who is not doing well turn into enabling? I think in this case, it seems like OP did the wrong thing in terms of helping for too long. The greatest intentions, of course. Greatest but, intentions, yeah. but helping for too long. And it was really good that OP finally decided like, I this is not something that is okay for me to do anymore. Uh -huh. 100%. It crossed the line here, but where does that line cross? Yeah, that is yeah, the big it's, question. It's hard, it's hard to know. Very hard. And it also depends on like, how long have you known this person? I think there's like, um, there's like this rule or th this rule is like, have you had more good days with them than bad? Which is like, uh, uh, and you can put that on any time scale. And the longer that you've known that person, the more like they could have bad days with you. So like Christian, I've known since kindergarten, he could probably be an asshole the rest of his life and would still be, he, he'd still have days like Left. Dude, he's filled up his tank, he's man. He's filled up his tank. Time to floor it on the asshole pedal, if you ask me. Right? So I, and I think it's, but it's like, you know, someone who I just met or something, like you only you only need to have maybe like a couple bad days. We're like, oh, I don't know if this is a good thing. Yeah. And so I think it like what it seems like is there's probably a lot of maybe good days stored in the tank. And maybe that's why OP was so willing to. But who knows? Who knows? But we would love to get your perspective. If you have any thoughts on that and any stories around that, we have a call line 440-508-65 six seven hit us with the stories we love you we love you so much also i need to tell you about my date last night oh. that was not a date it was just a friend it was just a friend hanging out with another friend no expectation of anyone driving anyone stationary stationary friend activities god i got so chewed out <laughs> for not driving her home i apologize to be clear <laughs> and we're on good terms she wanted to hang out the very next day see see stop it and for those of you that are like oh i see why sam's single I have been in back-to-back -back relationships since oh I was 16 God. for 
like two ish years, each one. So eat a fucking turn, bro. bro. Damn, these people are going a little savage. I need to be single. I haven't been single for <laughs> like all of my life, all of my adult years. Let them know, honestly. Yeah. So, and I just got out of a relationship since going back to Bali and it was lovely. There we go. One month. One month. But it was beautiful and still on good terms. That's right. Good terms all around. My ex-girlfriend texted me this morning. Still on good terms. Still on good terms. Another ex-girlfriend just got married. Don't talk to her, but <laughs> good terms with my cousin. Your cousin? Yeah, my cousin Max. They still don't talk. Wait. <laughs> You were going on all your partners and then a cousin. Like, she's still on good terms with my cousin. Oh, my ex, okay. My ex, ex, wait, I was like, wait, wait, wait. You, you yeah. lost me for a second there. I'm on good terms with, like, consecutively three exes. That's very impressive. Yeah. So get fucked. Yeah. I love you guys, but get fucked. But I love you. I love you too. All right. So that's it. See you on the next so one. So much. See ya.